Body da. Good morning, everyone in year three at Uskol Clanvuklin School in Wales. My name is Alistair Humphreys. I am an adventurer. A cold one this morning. I've still got my sun hat on, and my jumper is needs repairing. But I'm called Alistair, and I am an adventurer and an author. I write books, and I've written um, the Boy Who Bite the World books. And I've written The Girl Who Rode the Ocean, which you have been reading in school. Thank you for reading my book. And also, if you are good at reading Korean, I've written a book called Great Adventurers, which you can get in English. Not in Welsh yet, but you can get it in English. And also, you can get it in Korean. How cool is that? Look how beautiful that writing is. It's absolutely fantastic. I haven't got, I can't read it at all, so I hope the translator got it right. And it doesn't just say here, Alistair Humphreys is an idiot. Hopefully it says, great adventurers. Right, you have been reading my book. Thank you very much for that. And even better, you've also been sending me some fantastic questions. Quick sip of coffee. Oh, look at this. This is my coffee cup from Japan with beautiful... Japanese writing on and it's got the names of all the different bits of sushi in English thick roll and then so you can pronounce it futomaki in Japanese and then the uh, squiggly little Japanese writing which I cannot read at all and also it's quite dirty because I never wash it being in my shed anyway sorry you're busy you've got things to do today you don't need to listen to me just chatting away so let me get on and answer some of the fantastic questions you have written about the girl who rode the ocean. So here we are. Darcy says, how long did it take to write the book? Darcy, how long is a piece of string? It's a hard question to answer because I rode across the Atlantic Ocean in a rowboat um, in about 10 years ago, so quite a long time ago. And then I came home and I started writing a book about the adventure and I and it wasn't very interesting. And then I thought it'd be more interesting to write a book for children about rowing the Atlantic. And I'd written this book already. It's called The Boy Who Biked the World. And it's about my own adventures when I cycle around the world, but I made it with a boy riding around the world. So I thought, to be fair, the next book should be about a girl who rode the ocean. So I took this to some um, book publishers, the sort of people who make books, and I said, I want to write a book for children about a girl who rode the ocean. And they said to me, no one will read that. People don't want to read books about girls having adventures. People don't want to read books, um, and boys certainly won't read books about girls having adventures. And I said to them, well, I think that's very stupid because lots of people want to read about girls having adventures and lots of boys, or at least the boys I know, the cool, clever, superstar boys I know, they don't care if it's a boy or a girl rowing the ocean. They just want an exciting, interesting person rowing the ocean. So I struggled for quite a long time to find anyone to publish the book. And, uh, and they said it wouldn't sell very well. And in the end, I thought, you know what? I don't care. I want to write a book about a girl rowing an ocean, so that's what I'm going to do. And I did it. And therefore, Darcy, the answer is it took quite a long time <laughs> to write the book. Um, but the short answer of all of that is that usually it takes me about one year to write a book. Um, while I'm talking about this, I'm going to answer Yestin's question about why did I choose a girl to row the ocean and not a boy. So couple of reasons. One, I'd already done a book about a boy, so it was time to do one about a girl. And then secondly was that there are a lot of adventure books about boys going on adventures and there aren't so many about girls having adventures. And there's loads of girls I know who have brilliant adventures. So I thought we needed more books about girls having adventures. And also, as what I said just a bit now, that um, sometimes there's a worry that boys don't like reading books with girls in them. Well, I thought, I'm going to write a book with a girl who's 
doing cool adventures and I really hope that boys will like it. So that was why I then chose to have a girl rowing the ocean. Um, sorry, that was a long answer, Darcy, very long answer. Next question, Brayden, how long did it take for you to row the ocean? Well, it took me um, 45 days to row the ocean. There we are, that's a short answer. But when I rowed the ocean, there were actually four of us in the rowing boat. It was uh, me and three other people rowing together. And we would row for two hours. Two people would row at a time. And we'd row for two hours. And then we rest for two hours while the other two people row for two hours. And after two hours, those two people rest. And us two people go out and row for two hours. There's a lot of number twos in this answer. Ooh, number twos. <laughs> Speaking of number twos, did you like the bit in this book about how to go to the toilet on the ocean? <laughs> uh, Daisy says, how did you come up with the names of your characters? So in this book, the boy who bite the world is called Tom. And in this book, the girl who rode the ocean is called Lucy. And in the real world, my two children are called Tom and Lucy. So I thought I'd do them a book. Uh, also in this book is Ava. Uh, Ava's Lucy's friend in this book. And in real life, Ava is a real life friend of Lucy's. Um, some of the other names in the book. So in the class, quite a lot of the children um, who are in the class in this book, their names are the names of real life people who've done amazing adventures crossing oceans, rowing oceans. So the, um, I just pinched some of their names and popped them in just so that the book's got some, this class is full of people who've done incredible ocean rows. And then there's a few other names in the book which are mostly just um, friends of my children. So I sc scattered their names in. And do you know what, that is a good thing to do because then it's a good way of me testing whether any of my friends have read their book, have read the book. So recently, for example, one friend of mine, she said to me, thank you so much for putting my children's names in your book. That's really kind. And I said, no problem. And then I know some other friends of mine whose children are in the book and they haven't said thank you. And that means they haven't read my book. This book, by the way, starts off with a sea captain called Captain Horrocks. And in real life, I have a friend called Horrocks. And he had this book and for years and years, he didn't mention it. And then they had an, another little uh, girl. And when she got to being old enough to read, she was like, Daddy, you're in the book. And so after about 10 years, my really good friend finally read my book. That's how I came up with the names. Lindsay says, why did you write about a banana sandwich? A banana sandwich. Oh, I hope you've tried a banana sandwich. When I cycled around the world, I ate a lot of banana sandwiches because they are cheap, they are good energy, and they're pretty healthy. So uh, in this in this book, uh, Tom, Biking in the World, he eats a crazy number of banana sandwiches. And so this book is um, Tom's sister, Lucy. It kind of, sort of carries on from the other book. So Tom gets a little bit of a mention early on in the book, the brother, and I wanted just to throw in a little bit of banana sandwich as a little joke just to link it into this book for people who've read these book. If they see this, they'll go, ah, Tom, banana sandwich guy. By the way, you should try a banana sandwich. They're really nice. I recommend them. Florence says, why is she all on her own? That's a very good question, Florence. Lucy rows the ocean on her own. So... In real life, I rode the boat with three other people. There were four of us. When I started to write this book for children, I started having four people in the book, but it got really complicated and really hard to write. And I don't think I'm a clever enough writer yet to do that. So I got rid of them and I got it down to two people rowing the ocean, Lucy and Ava. But still... Oh, I found it really hard to write this book, because, especially because if there are two people rowing the ocean, one person rows while the other sleeps, one, then the other person rows while the other sleeps, and they just swap. So they don't really see each other, they don't really talk, so there wouldn't be much of a story between them. And I was writing it for ages, like 
a year and it was rubbish. So in the end, I got rid of Ava, moved her just over to being on the shore and turned everything into just Lucy rowing the ocean, which was certainly much easier to write. The problem with it, though, is that one person in an ocean could be a bit boring. And you'll have to tell me you've read the book if it's boring or not. I hope not, but I tried to not make it boring. So, and you need conversation to make a book fun and interesting. So that's why sometimes she talks to herself and sometimes she talks to the boat, Izzy. And I, I wanted to try to make the boat as much of a character as I could, um, but without making the boat actually come alive. Oof, I'm now getting hot. It's warming up. I've got my radiator on this morning. It's warming up. Look at my hair. Messy. Um, Maisie, were Lucy's parents worried? Now, I've now written a book about a young boy who cycles all around the world on his own without his parents and a book about a young girl who rows all the way across the Atlantic Ocean without her parents. And I think in real life, a parent would be very worried about that because it's pretty difficult and scary stuff to do. But I think that parents do a lot of worrying about children. And I think mostly children are pretty awesome and can do a lot more stuff than we give you guys credit for. And I think if um, young people in year three and four had to go off on an adventure, I think you'd be brilliant at having adventures. I think you could do amazing adventures. You could plan what to do, prepare where to go, and then you'd be determined and work hard. And I think you could do amazing adventures. And so I think then Lucy's parents in the book shouldn't be worried. In real life, of course, whenever somebody you love goes off on a big adventure, then you are worried because there is some risk and danger to adventure. That's part of the point, part of the appeal and the attraction is to have some danger and risk. So anyone worries when people go off on adventures, but it's up to, up to the person doing it, up to Lucy, to plan carefully, to um, not take crazy risks, to be really sensible, and uh, hopefully then everything will be fine. So uh, Tom and Lucy have got relaxed parents in the book. Sophie says, is rowing fun? Is rowing fun? <laughs> Sophie, you made me laugh. It's rowing fun. <laughs> oh. I hope you're joking, Sophie. I hope you're joking. Because that was a very funny joke. But rowing is not fun. No, <laughs> rowing is not fun at all. Actually, that's not true. Rowing is fun for about 10 minutes. And then after that, your bottom starts to hurt, your arms hurt, your legs hurt. And it's kind of boring. You just do this for two hours. Oh, and then you do it again and again and again. Oh my goodness. No, rowing is not fun. Going on adventures is fun. Being out on the ocean, seeing beautiful places is fun. But mostly rowing is a challenge. No, rowing is not fun. <laughs> Stefan, does it have a happy ending? Well, Stefan... I can't possibly spoil the story. You'll have to read on and find out. Elsie says, why did you call the sponsor Easy Freezy Pizzas? Okay. Lucy decides to row across the Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, rowing across an ocean is really expensive. I mean, crazy expensive. So in real life, it's much easier to get yourself a bike and a tent and go on a long bike adventure than it is to get a rowing boat and to row an ocean. It's really, really expensive. So when I was writing this book, I, oh, I'm getting cold again. <laughs> when I was writing this book, I didn't really know what to do because obviously uh, young people who want to go on adventures don't have thousands of pounds to spend on adventures. So I wondered whether Lucy should get the money for this adventure from her parents but my book editor said that doesn't look really nice that that kind of looks like only millionaire kids can go on adventures we don't want that 
So I was thinking, how how then could someone get the money to go on an adventure? I thought, ah, a sponsor, which is a, how, in the real world, how we paid for this adventure. You write to companies and uh, ask them uh, to help you. And if they're interested, they give you money. They put their name, their adverts on things, like you see footballers with the names across their shirts. You get sponsored and then people learn about the name of the company. So I thought, yes, that's what I'll do. I needed to think of a name of a company. Right. At this time, I was also trying to make the boat be more interesting than just the boat. Because I wanted Lucy to be talking to the boat. And so I thought, I know, I'll give the boat a real name so that, she, so that Lucy can talk. Rather than saying boat, she could talk to Izzy, the boat. And then Izzy can become a bit more of a character in the story. So I decided the boat was going to be called Izzy. So then I thought, which company would sponsor Lucy's adventure and yet allow her to call the boat Izzy? So I was like, Izzy, 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 Easy, 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 Freezy Pizza. So I came up with, I made up this company because Lucy dreams of her eating pizzas. Terrible, unhealthy junk food, but it's kind of what she was dreaming of on adventures. And so I thought, ah, that, there's a company that will sponsor Lucy. Easy, freezy pizzas. And Cassia ends with possibly the very best question I've ever been asked in many years of being asked questions about rowing across the Atlantic Ocean. And Cassia this book about a girl rowing an ocean, Cassia asks the brilliant question, which I don't know why people haven't asked before. Why aren't there any horses? What a fantastic question. Why aren't there any horses in this book? And you know what? I blame the editor of this book because to make this book better, there should definitely have been some horses. Well, actually, look, if you look on the picture, do you know what, when the waves, the white bits splashing on the front top of waves at sea, do you know what they're called? White horses. So actually, there are horses in the book. This, by the way, is kind of what our boat looked like. It was green like this. We had solar panels out, um, on the back um, to make electricity. There's a flying fish. We saw lots of flying fish. They would fly and land on the boat. Um, on the back, a storm petrel, a lovely uh, boat, a uh, bird we'd see, a whale. Um, and I don't know if you noticed this, by the way. When you were reading the book, did you see... Down at the bottom corner, Lucy actually. Let me let me get into the camera. Oh, I can't get into the camera. Here we are. Look at Lucy actually rowing across the ocean in her boat. Fun. That, by the way, is the bit I really like about this book. Now, where is? Hang on. Just want to get to one more thing. So, acknowledgement. So at the end of a book, you always see the people saying thank you to people. Now, this book, I wrote this book. It's my book. It's got my name on the cover. But to make a book good, you can't really do it on your own because you write and write and write. What's really helpful is to then show your book to other people, to clever people who really like reading books and understand stories. And they read the book and they can see the mistakes I've made and the bits that aren't that interesting and encourage you to go back and write it again and make it make it better. They're called editors. And I wanted to say thank you to, look, here, here's my list of editors. John Doolan. John Doolan, Mr. Doolan, your fantastic teacher, helped me edit this book. He did a lot of work to help me make this book better. So I imagine he is a brilliant teacher for teaching you guys about stories. So, thank you. Um, year three and four for your brilliant questions. Thank you, Mr. Doolan, for uh, sharing this book with your class. And thank you also, John, for editing my book. Thank you very much. Dioch. I hope you've all had a very, uh, I hope you've sort of kind of enjoyed this. And uh, I hope most of all that you'll plan to go off on lots and lots of good adventures. So, goodbye. Hoyle Val. Have a brilliant day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.